It's been estimated by the United States Environment Program that almost one million plant and animal species across the globe are currently threatened with extinction, and most of it is our fault. Poaching is a horror well known around the globe for its threat to elephant and rhino populations across Afro-Eurasia, but what about the rest of the world? Within the United States alone, the list of threatened species seems endless. Black bears, bighorn sheep, sharks, robins, and hingas, raptors, red wolves, sturgeon, paddlefish, and many more. Poaching is not confined within the borders of Africa. Countless species are slaughtered and driven to near extinction, right in our backyard. The Fossil Rim Wildlife Center, located in Glen Rose, Texas, seems like the perfect place to learn more about what we can do to stop poaching. The park has been dedicated to the conservation of endangered animal species for almost 50 years. Their seven-mile scenic drive offers a unique tourist attraction that encourages education on endangered species, while also raising money for their efforts. Our visit to Fossil Rim taught us about the delicate relationship between poaching and conservation. Poaching goes through some waves as well. Uh, when I first got into this industry, poaching was predominantly, I'm starving, I need to feed my family. Now poaching has evolved a bit to, there's a lot of money to be made by poaching for rhino horn. You know, I'm not even gonna eat the meat off of this rhino, I'm just gonna sell his horn because it's worth a gazillion dollars. So it's, it's not the same, it's not even the same nemesis anymore that we were facing before. And so I think a lot of times people think, well, I'm not a millionaire, so I can't, I can't help with money, and I'm not a conservationist, so I can't go somewhere and study some species, but we can do little things in our own lives. When people come here, we interact with them and try to inform them on issues such as rhino poaching. That's an easy one um, because you can see our rhinos, you can talk about the horn, why it's of no medical use, yet people are still interested in getting it. My department uh, has fourth year veterinary students that come through a program, so they're not only learning about uh, the medicine of zoological species, but we're also talking about conservation and conservation medicine and the impact that, um, that they can have long term. If you study it and you understand it and you recognize the things that impact it, then you can take actions to sort of change those actions. All of the things about recycling and reusing and, and reducing your footprint and all of those things makes a difference. It's clear that education and awareness are the first steps to making a difference in dwindling wildlife populations. But a small town about 40 miles outside of Dallas works to show their visitors that conservation can be a lot simpler than we think. Our next stop was Seagoville, Texas. The destination, the John Bunker Sands Wetland Center a man-made wetland that happened to become a home to a plethora of unexpected wildlife. Although not game wardens fighting poachers face to face, the team at the wetland center play their part by supporting the animals that they do encounter, encouraging populations to flourish despite the prevalence of poaching. This particular habitat, which is very, it's, it's ideal for, um, for migratory birds since we're in the middle of the U.S. Central Flyway. So the birds do come through here during their migration. It, this is not a preserve, it is a man-made wetland for the purpose of actually cleaning and treating the water, but this particular habitat meets all the needs that these migratory birds have, so I think that's the number one thing that local people can do is realize it doesn't take a lot to provide good habitat for the creatures in your area. So by us doing a better job of making sure that we are getting our garbage where it needs to be, so really getting into a practice not just recycling is reducing and reusing, because the less garbage we have to deal with, that's the less garbage that's going to impact the actual environment that these wild animals are trying to survive in. I think we need to, in the state of Texas, connect awareness with action. Being aware of a problem is great, but if you don't do anything to actually improve the situation, what good is your awareness doing if you're not using it to actually improve the situation? As inhabitants of an environment that has belonged to the wildlife just as long as it has belonged to us, it is our responsibility to take into account every animal that roams the grasslands, deserts, and forests of the North American region. Just not as many people are going to be as concerned about horned lizards or spiders or um, uh, creatures that aren't as attractive or socially acceptable. So I find it's a lot harder in Texas because a lot of our creatures are, um, well, they blend in with the environment, so they're not, um, not necessarily so flashy. People always hear about rhino horn. They always hear about elephant ivory. I don't know that they hear about turtles and 
some birds, songbirds. It's it's not as glamorous, I guess. You hear about a rhino being poached, and it really stirs emotions. Whereas things that happen in the states, North America anyway, maybe not as as high profile. After a month of researching and experiencing the different ways that people can work together to save threatened species, we still struggle to give you, the audience, an answer. There is no simple solution to poaching. The answer is not found within the efforts of one individual, but rather through the efforts of humanity as a whole. Animal conservationists like Adam, Holly, and Carol are studying, experimenting, and researching tirelessly to make this answer more accessible to you and I. It's time that we take a step back and admire the beauty within our own local ecosystems and show some love to the feathered, scaly, and hoofed creatures that we should be honored to share our planet with.